Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're gonna take another deep dive into sandbox tools. So last video we did, we talked about creating a grid from scratch. We talked about smooth, add detail, uh, flip, I think it's called. Um, some of the more commonly used sandbox tools to create you know, a flowing shape of a ground type situation. Uh, there's three more that we did not cover, and those are from Contours, which allows you to create a contoured space or a contoured surface from contour, existing contour lines. So we'll see how that works. Uh, and then we have Stamp and Drape. So we're going to see how all both 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 three all three of those commands work, and we're hopping to right now. All right, so here is our tools. We're going to start with, you know, let's, I'm just going to scoot some of this over a little bit, give us a little space, a little, little room to spread out. We're going to start with from contours. So I have some contour lines that are that are just sitting here. So you can see they are, it's about every six inches or so they step up and then there's a different outline. You can kind of see in 3D space the what that will end up making. What from contours allow me to do is grab all this geometry, click this button right here, and there it goes. It did that. Now, the quality of the mesh you get out of From Contours is highly dependent on the quality of the lines you feed it. So if I look at these lines, um, you know, they're fairly, they're, they're not super high fidelity. They're not super small. They're kind of, kind of janky. I have some sharp edges on here. I have some definite straight chunks where I'm assuming in a real, you know, this, this should be rounded or something like that. So this is not a beautiful set of lines, but it got me this. So it's not a bad looking mesh at all. Something you'll notice is it is cut off at the corners. It does what it will do here. Let's, let's do this. Let's turn on hidden geometry and you kind of see what happened here. So what it does is it takes each of these lines and it stitches it together with the next one. So you don't get an ordered mesh An order mesh being, you know, triangles all running the same direction. What you get instead is you do get a stitched mesh. If you have little standalone islands like this or pieces that are closed in like this, they will end up flat like that. They'll get, get connected together. And then at the bottom, if I look at this straight above, you can see the outline of this last contour line I had. You can see that right here. And what it did was it ran in and it filled in that contour by just stitching it all together again. So if I wanted to match the actual contour lines, I could come into, it does, oh, should I, it does create a group. If I go into that group and I was to get rid of like these extra lines right here, this extra stitching, I would see that that right there matches that right there. See that? So same thing here. Here's the line that I actually, uh, the line that actually followed. So if I get rid of this, uh, I will see, there we go. I will see that is this line right here. So you can you can fix that a little bit. One of the things I could do, um, I could drop down to, it looks like this is just, just above zero. So what I could do is I could at zero, I could create an outline. I could come here, I could come, go kind of like that. I could come here, draw this line up like where my furthest outline is. And then, I'm gonna delete that. If I grab all of this and create contours, it will see this is my bottom line and stitch that into it. So if I go like that, you can see, let's turn off those lines now. You can see it created a mesh that included that flat footprint. So a little bit nicer, nicer look right there just by adding a couple outlines to where I want that mesh to rest on the ground. Um, I could have taken it all the way back here and made force it to pull down or something like that, but that's not real realistic. If this is the way it goes up, it goes up that way. Um, yeah, so there you go. So if you do have these these contour lines coming in from another program or another, uh, you know, somebody else you're working with, you can absolutely use those to generate a quick mesh. Just like I said, it's, it's based on the data you feed it in, you're gonna get a good or a low quality mesh. Um, it is gonna all be connected like this stitched as opposed to ordered. Just an FYI, that's how that's gonna end up. All right, let's move on. 
So we have two other ones we're gonna look at with, with stamp and drape. So here I have a mesh. And what I'm gonna do is I want to, I'm gonna say this right here. See, this is a group, this is a group. And I'm gonna say that this right here is the footprint of the foundation of a building I wanna put in. I'm gonna take it and I don't actually have to have it sit into the geometry. I could have it up above like this if I want. It doesn't really matter. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna tell it, okay, I'm gonna stamp this into this. So I'm gonna select my stamp first. This is the stamping geometry. I'm gonna hit the stamp button and then it's gonna ask me for an offset. Uh, let's do something like, let's do, let's do uh, six inches. What that's saying is, okay, I'm gonna take the footprint right here and I'm gonna offset it six inches. So I'm gonna type in, oops, I don't actually need to highlight that, six inches and I'll hit enter and see that red line? It's gonna take that red line and stamp it down into whatever mesh I select. So when I pick on this mesh, you'll see what happens. There it is, there's my, there's my, my footprint plus a six inch offset creating, and I can use this, it's called stamp, which makes you think pushing down, but I could actually use this to step up. So if I wanted to step up to where that was floating, I could do that, or I could pull it down below grade like that and give myself you know, a spot for, which is what the tool is created for, a foundation and then uh, you know, the space between the ground and the concrete. Um, if I wanna make that smaller, tighter, I can do that. So if I, I'm gonna hit, uh, this again is at six inches, so if I want to drop down, I'll drop down like a half inch. Oops, that slash is very important. Half inch, enter, and now if I pick here, oops, I clicked the wrong button. Let's try that again. Uh, offset that into this. You can see that's much tighter up against that, that foundation. Only a half inch offset that's gonna let, let me cut down into it like that. So that would let me drop this directly in there with only like a half inch of clearance, which I could probably see if I zoom in here. Yeah, see, it's just a little teeny bit of clearance. So that is stamp. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Then let's look at drape. So the way drape works, similar setup. I'm gonna go up in the air. I'm gonna bring this over so it's floating above my mesh here. Um, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit so it's overlaps. Oh, not quite, a little too far. What drape's gonna do is it's gonna take this, it's gonna vertically project these lines down onto the mesh. That doesn't make sense? Just watch this. So I have my, the jump tray I wanna drape. I'm gonna click the drape button. I'm gonna pick my mesh and there we go. Slide that out of the way. That's all it does. Doesn't cut in, well, it does cut. It actually, if I come in here, this surface is separate from this surface, which is great if you wanna color it. So if I was to come in here and say, okay, give me a nice, green color here and here, and then this is gonna be a road, so I'm gonna make it brown. Uh, quick and easy way to designate things that are going on. So if I wanna do you know, a preliminary study on where my house is gonna go or where, where land's gonna be cleared versus what's gonna be saved, that sort of thing, this is a great way to do it because I can take my existing mesh, keep it exactly as it is, and just go in and color code, that sort of thing. What it doesn't do is it doesn't cut into this at all. So it's not going to like, uh, you know, flatten this out for a road or something like that. I can do that. So I can actually, if I was to take the same exact thing and as I bring it over here, I could use this. This isn't a foundation. It's not a two, 3D element, it's just flat. But I could do the same thing because I could use rather than drape, I could use a uh, stamp and stamp that in here. And then that would let me you know, do something more similar. I saw that only half inch offset. Let's let's bump that up to like 12 inches. There we go. I'm gonna take this and stamp it in here. So there I can go like, you know, get kind of a, a curb bed there and then have it angle back up, cut up on that side. Um, so it doesn't have to, a lot of times people think of stamp and they think of this example I gave, which cut down for this to drop in, but you could also use it with a shape to build up to and cut out of an existing uh, mesh as well. You can see how that works. I didn't slide that over far enough so it didn't hang off the side, but you still see what I'm trying to get at there. Um, so there you go. Pretty quick, pretty easy tools. And once you know how to use them, going through and doing adjustments to your meshes, just it's just super quick, super easy, and uh, it's all there right inside of those tools uh, in Sandbox. So that's 
all of the sandbox tools between those last two videos uh we did from contours from scratch stamp drape smooth add detail flip so we we got it all we took all that i think i'm saying flip wrong hold on let me look on my screen and make sure i'm saying the right the right thing flip edge not to be confused with flip flip edge so anyhow <laughs> Regardless of the name of the tool, we covered it. We covered them all. So uh, that's everything there is to be seen with Sandbox Tools. What I would love to hear from you guys, if you can leave me a comment down below, I'm looking for use cases where people are using this, uh, you know, in, in your day-to-day -day SketchUp. Where are you, are you, is it, is it strictly actual landscape stuff? Are you, are you cutting stuff out and filling it in where you're going to be doing that in like a construction sort of way? Or is there another way that you're using? Are you using it for some unique workflow that that you found that those tools work well. I would love to hear what that is because sometimes people use these tools in ways that we don't even think about. And it's so cool to get to see that. And I would love to highlight some of those unique uses of sandbox tools. So let me know in the comments if you've got one of those. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you will be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, like I said, leave us a comment down below. Tell me about those unique workflows. Tell me what you think of sandbox tools. Or if you have an idea for a video that you haven't seen made yet, or maybe as an older video that we need to update, something like that, give us your ideas for videos. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.